Hello everyone, my name is Javier Lopez Arralde and I'm an application engineer working for more than 22 years in ZIV. I'm strongly involved in IC61850 specification and testing and in the last two years I'm also involved in cybersecurity. The purpose of this webinar is to introduce some of the cybersecurity features of our protection IDs for your digital substations. The first question could be, why cybersecurity is necessary? It's true that historically, the traditional electrical network used own and isolated communication networks, offering what it's called security by isolation, and serial communications and proprietary protocols and data formats, offering what it's called security by darkness. But the need of improvement in remote monitoring and maintenance made the smart grids real. So now, the use of open standards and protocols based on Ethernet communications, TCP IP, and the connection of the substation with external networks make these smart grids vulnerable to cyber attacks. Therefore, we need to develop cybersecure IEDs to build cybersecure substations and try to make a cybersecure world. The main cybersecurity features of our IDs are included in this slide. Role-based access control together with strong passwords, remote authentication, secure sockets, physical and logical port disabling, firmware securitization, and audit log. Now we will move one by one to provide more details. One of the, of the main cybersecurity features is securing the access to the ID using authentication and authorization. And both are implemented using role-based access control. First of all, access to the ID is protected by user and password combination, including the local HMI access. The ID has the possibility of defining local users up to 20 with their passwords. The ID has also the possibility of defining roles up to 10 and each role can have up to seven permissions assigned. One local user will have one role assigned and one role will have one or several permissions. The available permissions are strongly based on IEEE 1686 and allow to limit the information and operations a user can access and perform. These permissions are visualization, command execution, change of settings, change of configuration, change of firmware, user management, and audit log. All these local users passwords and roles can be remotely configurable, which facilitates the integration with cybersecurity centralized systems. The ID has also the functionality of automatically logging out a user by inactivity. The ID implements strong passwords. The minimum length of the password is eight characters and it must contain at least one uppercase letter, one lowercase letter, one number, and one non-alphanumeric character. Passwords are never displayed in clear text, and they are stored encrypted inside the ID. We've been talking about local users, but it's very common and advisable to manage the users in a centralized server so that the ID uses remote authentication to authenticate the users, as we can see in the picture on the right. The client provides user and password to the ID, and the ID authenticates the user against the centralized server. If authenticated properly, the ID gets the role of that user from the server and verify it. If verified properly, the ID knows the permissions of that role and lets the user perform the corresponding operation. 
Users and passwords and their corresponding roles are stored in the centralized server. This information is more susceptible to change. The utility can create, remove or modify users, change their passwords and perhaps reassign a different role to a user. On the other hand, roles and their permissions are defined in the ID. This information is less susceptible to change. Once the roles and their permissions are defined, it's difficult that they change. The ID implements the most common protocols of remote authentication, which are LDAP and RADIUS. The ID can be configured so that if the access to the centralized server is not available, use local authentication based on the local users mentioned in previous slides. Another main cybersecurity feature is securing the communications. The ID uses secure sockets, for example, HTTPS for web, SFTP for file transfer, SSH for remote access to console, or LDAPS or STAR TLS for remote authentication. The use of non-secure sockets is also available. The ID is delivered with a self-generated and self-signed certificate by default, but it offers the possibility of changing both the certificate and the private key remotely to allow the final client to customize the security of the ID. The ID also implements mutual authentication based on IEC 62351-3. This mutual authentication enables that both entities of the communication, the client and the server, authenticate each other, which offers even more secure communications. A common requirement of cybersecurity is that unused ports and services must be disabled. So the ID has the possibility of enabling and disabling physical ports, for example, the local from port, the remote serial ports, the LAN ports and the USB port. The ID also offers the possibility of enabling and disabling logical ports, also known as services. For example, FTP or SFTP, HTTP or HTTPS, Telnet or SSH, MMS for System 150, SNTP, Syslog, other protocols like DMP3, Modbus, proprietary protocols like Procome, protocols for remote authentication like LDAP or RADIUS, etc. Finally, the ID offers the possibility of changing the port number of the logical ports. For example, regular web access port 80 can be configured with other number, for example, 444. Another main aspect of cybersecurity is the patch management. Cybersecurity is alive and the firmware updates to the ID may be relatively frequent, so firmware securitization is a key factor. The firmware of the ID is encrypted and digitally signed by ZIV, which guarantees the confidentiality and integrity of the firmware. Additionally, we offer the final client the possibility of signing the firmware for more security. The ID validates both signatures and additionally validates the firmware by ID type. It's not possible to upload a firmware of one ID type to another ID type, which avoids mistakes during the firmware upload process. We all know that negligence is one of the most common cyber attacks, right? Of course, the ID will not be reflashed with the new firmware until it has been fully verified. If something is wrong during the process, the ID will maintain the old firmware. Last but not least, it's crucial to have a good cybersecurity event generation and management. It's what we call audit log. Cybersecurity events enable to comply with one of the basic concepts of cybersecurity, the non-repudiation, 
which consists in avoiding denying that a device performed an action that it did or claiming that a device performed an action that it didn't. The cybersecurity events are stored in a circular file, first in, first out, FIFO, with capacity for more than 2,048 events, and it's permanently stored. There's no way to remove it. This file is displayed in the web page of the ID, and it can be downloaded through the web page, file transfer, or IEC 61850. Each event includes information like the date and time of a currency, the severity, if it's an event or an alarm, the event text, which is the description, the username, the originator IP address, etc. Here's an example of a successful login and logout of the user admin over HTTP from that IP address. Some of the logged activities are the following. Successful and failed login, logout, successful and failed upload and download of configuration file, successful and failed firmware upload, change of settings, port and service enabled or disabled, user management, for example, creation, deletion or modification of a user or a role, certificate management, etc., resets and restarts of the ID, and the long, long, etc. All these events are sent to up to three servers using syslog, which enables to manage all cybersecurity events in a centralized way. And this is the end. Before saying goodbye, I would like to convey to you that in ZIV, we take cybersecurity into account in our day-by-day -day work, both in our processes, design, manufacturing, coding, etc., and in our procedures, and that we are continuously dedicating to improve our cybersecurity, developing new cybersecurity features in our IDs that allow us to comply with the most demanding cybersecurity standards and specifications of our clients. Thank you very much for your attention. It's been a pleasure to be able to share these few minutes with you. For further information, please feel free to contact us in our web page or directly contact me through my email. Bye bye and enjoy the day.